Welcome everyone to the GGBL. We have opening day across the league. And we're gonna show seven games here today. We're gonna kick it off with Michigan against New York. We got Cole Hamels on the mound, a lefty veteran. And then Justice Sheffield, the lefty youngster. So New York got a little age to them. Michigan, a little bit younger across the board, across their roster. So we'll see what Cole Hamels got here today against this youngster lineup. We'll see which one wins out. First pitch, ground ball. Hamels, a little comebacker, back to first. Gets the easy out against Hoi Jun Park. Geraldo Perdomo, gonna get a base hit past shortstop. That's gonna be the first hit for Michigan and the first hit of the ball game. Next batter, Alex Bregman comes on up, but Perdomo is gonna steal this base safely and successfully. Look at that pop time, 1.8, that's not bad. But Perdomo against the lefty, that's a very, very good jump against the veteran Cole Hamels. But then Alex Bregman says, get up off of me. Gets that fastball inside, takes that thing all the way to the stands for a two-run shot against Hamels. And you know what? Michigan looking a little scary there with the uh, one, two, three. Poijun Park, Perdomo, and Bregman. We'll see if Hamels can kind of settle it down here a little bit. Runners on first and second here still in the bottom of the third now as we jump forward. And Michigan now is up three to nothing thanks to Bobby Bradley's little single there. That's going to get him another run. Dylan Carlson coming on up, gets a fly ball to right field, and it's going to drop. Very bad route taken by the right fielder. Center fielder just could not come on over, and that is going to get down for another RBI single. It is now 4 to nothing. 0-2 count here, and luckily, Hamill says, enough is enough. Got to get a strikeout here, and he does. 4-0 game, Justice Sheffield getting in a little bit of a mini jam. Here's a base hit. We got a throw coming up from left field all the way to home. It's a little offline, and New York is getting a little bit of a comeback now. Runners on second and first, and Nicky Delmonico is going to strike out. Still 4-1 game here. Alex Bregman's going for two home runs on the day. He says, pizza, pizzazz, pizza. I want Oppo Taco today. We just went there. Strike three called, and strike three called. Justice Sheffield, two Ks in the inning. He's looking pretty darn good here against this veteran-laden New York pizzazz team. So can you get Alex Bregman out? The answer is yes, you definitely can. But things are getting a little bit chippy between these two AL East teams. Carlson now with two strikes on him, and Robbie De La Rosa says, that's enough. Challenge you high and in and get you low and away with a strikeout. Daniel Palka coming up in the bottom of the eighth. Robbie De La Rosa has had a nice little outing against Michigan here, shutting him down a little bit. But Daniel Palka comes up and gets a solo home run to make it 6-1, to one, extends the lead out. Anthony Ghost, the former outfielder turned pitcher, going up against Alex Bregman. And Bregman says, I'm going for three home runs today. Absolutely crazy performance here for Alex Bregman. What a way to open up your GGBL career, my friend. Is he cheating? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. Michigan, 7-3 win, 11 hits on the day, no errors, so they played cleanly. Justice Sheffield had a nice little outing against New York. New York, on the other hand, they got to figure out that offense. They got to get. They did score two runs there in the ninth, but they do have to figure it out eventually. They're too good with Bryce Harper, who ended up not doing much here in the game. So they got to figure that out. All right, let's go to Oklahoma against Chicago. The Breeze against the Hawks. We got Luke Weaver against Garrett Cole in this one. And leading them off is Danny Mendick. He's going to get a base hit to lead off Chicago. Logan Forsythe here with a strikeout. That's a tough pitch to handle. He made him look silly there with a fastball inside. Ethan Letterman, the custom prospect, also going to strike out. So Luke Weaver is settling down just a little bit. Stolen base attempt here for Pete Cosmo with Mookie Betts coming up. That's a good situation now. Cole, 0 2 count. Mookie says, see ya. Two run shot for Mookie Betts. And anytime you get to watch those two elite type of players go up against each other, especially in the GGBL, which is a rarity. It's a rarity. A lot of these guys are minor league talented players. 
Anytime you watch those elite guys versus elite guys, it is a fun matchup to watch. But Mookie Betts is going to win this one. 2 nothing. Chicago will get a sack fly. Cespedes is going to score. Inching ever closer, 2-1. to one. Here's a little base knock past third base line, past Spencer Torkelson. Going to go all the way to the wall, and they're going to score the runner from first base. Pete Cosma gets the relay and doesn't let it go. He doesn't let it fly. Interesting decision here, but Luke Weaver going to take this off of the knee. He is still able to run it down. Gets a first base and tag the base, but runner will be safe regardless, but it looks like he's all right. He will get Logan Forsythe for the second time. Still a 2-2 two to two game here, and Garrett Cole now, after that two-run shot, his offense came back and said, we got you, bud. And he says, all right, that's good because I got you guys too. Danny Jansen's going to strike out as well. We got another strikeout here in the bottom of the third. Garrett Cole now is dealing. Another strikeout. Pete Cosma is going to go down swinging as well. Still, bottom of the third, Matt Davidson looking on a curveball. Pretty nasty pitch here. Garrett Cole is still Hitting his spots. Spencer Torkelson comes on up. That's going to be his first major league hit. Can't even say major league. That's going to be his first professional hit. <laughs> his first GGBL hit. Goes for a double. Danny Jansen's got a chance to knock him in, but he can't do it. He's going to strike out again for his second time against Cole. Now you got Ethan Letterman coming up in the top of the fifth with a runner on. He's going to pound this thing to the opposite field for a two-run shot. Ethan Letterman from Israel. Custom prospect going to hit a two-run homer to take the lead. He breaks the tie. Brian Sammons comes on in for Luke Weaver. Should mention that. And then Garrett Cole now with the lead. Ends the fifth with a strikeout. Oklahoma now. Got to get it going. You got Adam Lau pitching and Danny Jansen finally after two strikeouts says, I finally got a good pitch to hit. Adam Lau visibly frustrated as Oklahoma now is inching closer to taking the lead back. It's 4 to 3 now. 107.3 exit velo and 436 foot bomb for Danny Jansen. Let's go to the top of the eighth. Chicago going to ground out into a double play. It's a very good double play started by the rookie, Spencer Torkelson. Bottom eight, Carl Edwards Jr. is going to come on in and get an easy little fly out to Yoannis Cespedes. He makes the play. One down here in the bottom of the eighth. This is a very crucial spot here for Chicago. Strike three. Pete Cosma going to go down swinging. Full count. Two down. And Mookie Betts is going to give this one a ride. Is it going to go? Nope. Center fielder makes the play. And Oklahoma, unfortunately, wastes their 1-2-3. Roberto Osuna coming on for Chicago. And we get a little fly ball here to right field. That's not going to be deep enough to score a run to tie the game. But we do have a base hit to right field. And we've got something going here if you're a Hawks fan. Steven Souza. Got to get an extra base hit, right? Stolen base attempt by Delino DeShields Jr. He checks in as the pinch runner. And he is going to get on second base. A scoring position now for Souza. One, two count. Fly ball. Deep to center, but again, just not deep enough to do any sort of damage. That's going to hold the Shields at second base. Two down. Spencer Torkelson coming on up. Can the rookie, can the young guy get it done in the clutch? Osuna, the veteran, challenged him right down the middle, and he pops it up. Second baseman will make the play. That's Forsyth, and the Chicago Breeze will get an opening day W, stealing it away from the Oklahoma Hawks. Garrett Cole, again, was just absolutely dominant. Five innings, you know, it's opening day. And the thing is, your starters, like your aces, a guy like Syndergaard, a, like, a guy like Garrett Cole, a guy like you, Darvish, those guys are going to be really valuable. The drop-off between talent from those guys to your number twos, maybe your threes, it's pretty substantial, guys. So you want to be able to protect those ace arms as much as possible. Anything you can do to do that, the better. Runner on first base here, Indiana. Nate Lowe is going to get a RBI double. Lead off the scoring here in this AL Central matchup. Got Columbus and Indiana. These two teams probably don't like each other too much. Very Midwestern type of vibe here that we got going on here. Luke Rayleigh, the next inning. We got the bottom of the second. 0-2 count, and he's going to send this all the way in to what looks like almost a identical 
Triples Alley from Comerica Park. I kind of like this a little bit, being a Detroiter over here. Triple for Luke Rayleigh, and then this is going to be also going into that Triples Alley. We got a base knock here, another RBI, double. Oh, but it's going to get away, and we got another triple potentially. No, Diefe Garcia, the pitcher, had to come over to third base to make the tag from the errant throw from Aquino. Either way, good relay to cut down the runner head into third. Noah Syndergaard still pitching very, very well. He's going to end the fourth with a strikeout. And that also was a really nice play by left fielder coming on all the way out there into foul territory, making that play. That's a really tough play, man. As an outfielder, I know how tough that is. That's a really tough play. We get another strikeout here in the top of the fifth inning, and now Syndergaard's got seven. Still, fifth inning, going to strike out his eighth Columbus Cardinals. So they just cannot figure him out. Let's go the other way here. Matthew Liberatore. Diego Garcia going to get pulled with runners on first and second. And Liberatore is going to give up a base knock. Throw comes on in from center field. And that run is going to be tacked on to Garcia's line score here. Base knock into the right field corner. Can Aquino make a good throw here? Let's see. Little one hopper to first base. Fired back to home and... Runner will be safe. It is six to nothing. And unfortunately for Dieve Garcia, all those runs are going to tack on to him. Ugh. So very, very unfortunate. But take a look at this. We got a shot out here to deep left center. Nobody's going to catch this one. Now it is seven to nothing here. Miguel Andahar showing off the power, showing off the pop in his bat that I've really, really liked watching throughout his career. Even though he's a Yankee, I still got to respect it. Still got to respect it. Meanwhile, Shaw's going to strike out. That is Syndergaard's ninth strikeout. Let's take a look at that replay here. We got a changeup. Look at the break here. Six-inch break. That's half a foot, man. And the RPM, rotations per minute. It's absolutely insane what Syndergaard is doing here tonight. Or today, I should say. And Lindor also going to strike out. He cannot figure out Syndergaard. And nobody can, apparently. Aquino. Has been an adventure out there in right field. We've got another triple for Indiana. That's two triples. This time to Sev Servideo is going to get a triple here. And guys, that is going to do it. Columbus will tack on some runs finally against that Indiana bullpen. They make it a little bit closer than it was. It was 11 to 6 final score. They did tack on five runs in the ninth inning, and Syndergaard, guys, was amazing. By the way, this was. The 18th time that Syndergaard has recorded double digits and strikeouts in his six years as a pro. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. So Thor definitely dropped the hammer down on those Cardinals here today. Guys, I apologize that this game does not have the score bar on the bottom on the bottom right, but I will do my best to keep you guys updated with the scoring. I will tell you that Bauer and DeGrom, you would think, would be a pitcher's duel. So Josh Reddick going up against Bauer. He's going to strike out. And then look at this strikeout by Jacobs Grom. He's going to hit 101, triple digits high and inside. Like, dude, you try to catch up to that. That's really difficult to do. Meanwhile, Jared Kalanick going up against Trevor Bauer, the runner on first base, is going to go the other way. It's going to be his first hit of his professional career. So congratulations there, Jared Kalanick. Definitely knew this was coming against this type of competition. But, I mean, Jared... Jared Kalanick against Trevor Bauer. I mean, that's a pretty cool matchup in and of itself. Trevor Bauer, though, will settle down here. Leone Tavares going to strike out, so that's back-to-back -back strikeouts. And he's going to exit the second inning with none scored against him. Let's go to the end of the third as Trevor Bauer strikes out yet again another hitter. New Orleans is keeping his guys in it. Still no hits against Jacob deGrom. Jezumel Valentin, and uh-oh, Jared Kelenic out there in left field is going to take a pretty bad route. I don't think he would have caught it anyway, but Valentin is going to go ahead and try for three, and the throw is pretty much in time, but the tag was just not applied quick enough, and Jezumel Valentin will get a RBI triple, I should say. Bauer here with a strikeout on Tavares. Now we got a base knock here against DeGrom, and now the swing the New Orleans swing are starting to attack Jacob DeGrom. Here's a base hit up the middle. Tavares is going to come on in here and make the throw to home. Not in time. 
the run will score. We got a couple runs up on the board now for New Orleans. And just like that, manager Rabid Doss, not David Ross. I think he's still coaching the Cubs right now. Guys, I I say that to be funny because you can't you can't do much with the coaching right now once we started the season. So we'll we'll address coaches here a little bit later on in the offseason, try to get those guys custom, maybe fake, fake coaches so that we don't have the pros coaching here. But we get Austin Pruitt here giving up a base hit. That's going to be an RBI single. And we get Nick Senzel coming on up. And this is going to be over Jared Kellenick's head. He makes a good effort, but it will be a ground rule double. And now the swing are living up to their moniker. They're living up to their name here. They are attacking Dallas. We get a ground ball. It's going to be an RBI ground out. And the swing, yet again, tally another run. It's going to be six to nothing. Seven hits for six runs and two hits given up by Trevor Bauer. Man, this has been a slaughter. This has been a slaughter for opening day. If you're a Dallas Hatters fan, you're pretty much hating this right now. But Jordan Westberg going to get in on the offensive onslaught. Austin Pruitt going to give up a solo shot to Westberg, and it's now seven to nothing on eight hits. Go figure that. Neftali Fleas, we're going to jump all the way to the ninth inning because you know what's about to happen here. Strike three. Called. Game over. Trevor Bauer gets the W. Matching up against Jacob DeGrom, Bauer is the better man here in this one. So Bauer had a couple strikeouts, went seven innings. Jacob DeGrom could have been a little bit better in my opinion, but, you know, the swing, man, that's, that's part of their name. It's part of their name. You knew they were going to get that offense going at some point. So New Orleans, I want to see what they're going to do in the next couple of games, maybe in some simulation. But so far, they look like they're pretty good. If you can do what you just did against Jacob DeGrom, one of the best pitchers in the game, yeah, I'm thinking I like your chances. All right, let's now head out to Minnesota and Houston. We're in Houston at Copperhead Brewing Company Stadium. Yeah, it's a fake company. I understand. But have you ever tried Copperhead Brewing? It's really good, guys. You need to go try that. Joe Maurer, I should mention, had a single here, but nothing doing for Minnesota. Let's go to the bottom of the first inning, and we got Brett Lawry coming on up and making an error. So normally, Brett Lawry is very good defensively. Now, I know he's not in the game anymore, so maybe he's a little rusty. But a big situation here, Jake Odorizzi has been really trying to find it. He's been really fighting against it, and he gets Josh Donaldson to pop up into foul territory. Catcher's going to make the play. And we get a strikeout by Yaz. His strength is going to strike out. And then Joe Maurer here at first base going to make the play on Gregory Polanco. And their defense holds. Jake Odorizzi gets a little bit lucky. Mike Price, custom prospect. First pitch swinging. He's going to get a base hit against Spencer Turnbull. That is his first GGBL hit of his entire career. He's going to get on first base with a little single here. We got a strikeout on Brett Lowry. He's having a rough time here in this game. Next up, we got Gigliotti. He's going to pop up behind home plate. Catcher's going to make the play. Still nothing, nothing game. Next up, we got Brandon Snyder against Odorizzi. He's going to make him pay for this one. That's a solo shot. 0 2 count goes the other way for a Oppo Taco. Brandon Snyder with the solo home run, guys, and Odorizzi, like we mentioned, had been kind of struggling a little bit. He's been trying to find his groove here. Finally, Houston puts a run up on the board. Mike Price is going to strike out against Turnbull. Had a runner on first base, had a runner on. you got to be able to get at least something in motion, something in play here against Turnbull, and they can't get it done. So Minnesota, back-to-back -back strikeouts. we got Gigliotti here with a base knock. Yep, going to drop right into... Left fielder going to fire it to second base to hold the runner, but take a look at this. Manager's going to pull Spencer Turnbull early. I don't even remember what how many pitches he had, but man, that was just an early pull. We're in the fifth inning right now. Runners on the corner. Yastrzemski coming on over, makes the catch, but look at this. They're going to try it all the way to home. A two-speed. Two-speed is going to score on the sack fly foul out. Like, when's the last time that's ever happened? Denzel Good's going to make this play at short. And we're going to go to the next inning. Dylan Covey coming on in here for Minnesota. We get a base knock. 
Back at the middle, Gigliotti's gonna cut it off, makes a nice play, holds the runner to one. Denzel good, though. Custom player gonna lay down the bunt. Can he make it? Oh, they go for two, they go for second base. But old man Joe Maurer can't make the throw off his back foot. If anything, I'm probably just trying for first base. I, I mean, I, maybe you don't even, the pitcher's not gonna get there. Second baseman probably should have taken that. But we do have a double play opportunity here for Minnesota. They come through with it. Dylan Covey might just get out of this. But Josh Donaldson comes on up, gets a walk. The runner did move to third on that double play though. Yes, Stremski comes on up. Ground ball right to Joe Maurer. And luckily for Minnie, they escape by the hair of their chinny chin chin guys. Man, that could have gotten disastrous for them, but they got it done. Base hit for Randy Arozarena with nobody down. So leadoff single. Now Mike Price gonna ground out to first baseman in the double play. That is huge for Houston. That's terrible for Minnesota. Ground ball up the middle to shortstop Denzel Good. Makes a little flip to second baseman. They make the play. They get out of the inning as well. Gregory Polanco coming up and is going to hit a solo shot. Dylan Covey going to leave it right in his wheelhouse, and he takes care of business, guys. Houston now takes the lead in a clutch home run by Gregory Polanco. Huge home run for Houston. Take a look one more time at the swing, the trajectory, 101.5, velo, 407 distance. That's a shot, man. That is a shot. So 2-1, top seven, and look at this play out center field by Drew Waters. Great read, good jump off the get-go, off the contact, and take a look. Now he's just coasting, coasting. Make sure you don't run into that wall. 96.5 route efficiency there. Good job by Drew Waters, man. That's why he's a top 50 prospect. Here's a ground ball to short. Little flip to second with two down. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. We're going to actually skip ahead here. And Yastrzemski has been over on the day. Bottom eight, runner on first base. We're going to go all the way to third. First to third. Yastrzemski in with a double. Houston is now threatening to extend the lead out. Now we got Taylor Hearn against Gregory Polanco. It doesn't matter. Righty, lefty, lefty, lefty. It doesn't matter. Gregory Polanco's now got two home runs against both types of pitchers. And Houston has now extended their lead five to one. A big time, big fly by Gregory Polanco. Now the last play of the game, top of the ninth, what a play. First baseman gets the flip. Houston with the nice win over Minnesota. 5-1 win, guys. 10 hits for many. They just couldn't cash in. They had a lot of hits today, but they couldn't cash in when it counted. Houston, however, did. They made sure that it did. Gregory Planko, definitely the player of the game, going 3-4 for four with two home runs. Definitely deserved of that honor. All right, guys, let's go out to Maples Park. And shout out here to Spagoo, who ended up making the stadium. It's one of the most beautiful stadiums in all the GGBL. So I appreciate your effort here in making this stadium. It fits exactly with what the Wisconsin Maples are supposed to all be about, man. So, guys, if you need a stadium, go check out Spagoo. And make sure when you make your stadiums that you can hold Jesse Winker, right? The guy is on fire in the real life, big leagues. And now here in the GGBL, he's swinging for the fences, and he's going to take Tyler Molly deep. Look at this. There's a slider that just caught too much of the inside part of the plate. He takes it deep, man. That's a good swing. Tough to hit, tough to take out, but Winker does it with ease. Phoenix is now up one to nothing. Let's go to the bottom of the second inning, and we've got a strikeout on Joey Gallo. So Max Freed is still holding down the Wisconsin Maples. Now here is custom prospect Matt Justice, one of actually my favorite players here. I think he's going to have a really nice career. Hopefully the Maples can hang on to this guy, because eventually when he becomes a free agent, Maybe they're not going to be able to be able to pay this man. He's going to be a pretty nice one for sure. So he gets his first big league hits, his first GGBL hit off of Max Freed. Got to like that match of righty, lefty. Now you also get a base hit here by Kevin Kramer and then a walk by Eichelman. So Freed has let up three base runners in a row. Gets a nice strikeout here though. His second. Now the catcher, Winston Sawyer, gets jammed a little bit and it's going to go right up the middle for a two RBI single. Wisconsin takes the lead. Now, 
you got to feel a little bit ripped off right there, right? His first major league hit for two ribbies. And if you're Max Fried, you got to feel a little bit ripped off here. But here's Danny Santana in right field with the gun. Look at that. The runner didn't even have a shot. You got to take one more look at it on replay. Maples trying to get aggressive here. Eichelman can't score. Man, that's that is a that is a that's a shot, man. That's a cannon. That's a rope by Danny Santana. Now here, Wisconsin is again trying to be aggressive on the base pass here against Max Free. Gallo with a single. Runner gonna go to third base. Now take a look at this. Matt Justice gonna send this one way out there. Deep, but Billy Burns. The center fielder gonna make this catch, but the run will score. Matt Justice does get credit for the run. Batted in with the sack fly. Little opposite field shot here, and this is gonna go. So Drew Mendoza takes the lead for Phoenix. His first major league home run. First GGBL home run, professional home run, takes the lead. It is now four to three. Bases loaded situation. Now first baseman dives, can't make the grab. It's gonna be a bases loaded single. Wisconsin is now tied. Dalton Pompey with the opposite field hit. Max Freeze night, day, night. Can never tell with created stadiums anymore, guys, but <laughs> since they don't have night games in created stadiums. But Max Freeze day is done. Seth Beer coming up, ground ball, double play opportunity, Phoenix converts it but Seth Beer will get credit for the RBI as a run will score Edwin Encarnacion apparently went apparently he didn't check his swing and David Hess gets out of the little jam but they do take the lead 5-4 to four. so good inning for Wisconsin way to come on all the way back third baseman going to make this play here that's Kelvin Gutierrez Tyler Molly's line there four innings pitched and 77 net pitches, so he just had, he just couldn't keep his total pitches down, guys. So that was really kind of the name of the game here. And it was a little high scoring, you know, four runs right now, five runs for Wisconsin, pretty high scoring so far. Winston Sawyer having a pretty nice day, guys, really nice day. Had a two RBI single, now he's got a runner thrown out, trying to steal. Jesse Winker coming up, got that solo home run to lead us off in the scoring, but Dalton Pompey gonna make this play in center field near the warning track. He's gonna get it done. Now, Renato Nunez, the first baseman for Phoenix, is gonna go deep into the stands, and it is now a tie ball game. So Harold Ramirez, the youngster, against Renato Nunez, it is what it is. Let us go to Jared Eikhoff's appearance, guys. We're in the top of the seven, still tie game. And Billy Burns is going to strike out looking. That's a tough pitch. Good job by Jared Eikhoff. Here now, a little wild pitch. Tag does come on in, but not applied in time. Winston Sawyer can't corral it. We got a runner. We got bases loaded now in this situation. And now we got right fielder. That's Joey Gallo out there. He's going to try to come up firing here. He's got a good arm, a gold glove caliber arm. And he's not going to get this throw online. And it is a sack fly for Phoenix. Now, here's Danny Santana. He's currently two for two on the day. It's a 2-2 count. He's going to let the fly ball to right field with two down. Twos were wild there. He was two for two. 2-2 two -two count with two down. Just couldn't come through. But look at Matt Justice with nobody on base. He's going to get in with a double with that seven speed. Dude, if you were just a little bit faster, he might have been at third base right now. Unfortunately for Wisconsin, they didn't have anybody on base at that point. That would have been a really, really nice shot for Matt Justice to drive somebody in to tie the game up. But Seth Beard does come up, gets a base hit through that 5.5 hole, that Tony Gwynn hole, and we get a little bunt here. That's crazy. We get a bunt, and Eichelman is going to drive the run in through a sacrifice RBI bunt. Now Bryce Terang on second base, he did pinch run. He's going to steal third base. Now we have an opportunity here for Wisconsin to take the lead with a base knock, but man, Phoenix gets the strikeout. A huge strikeout. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth now. Still 6-6 game. Dalton Pompey gets on first base with a walk. A one-out walk. That is huge because Dalton Pompey does have some speed. Seth Beer coming on up. Takes the ball and Pompey swipes second. So they got the runner on scoring position here. Pompey's got the speed. If Beer can get it into the gap, but Beer is going to walk it off. A two-run shot. 
final score, eight to six, Wisconsin. What a game. What a game, guys. They came all the way back. They, both teams, Phoenix and Wisconsin, went back and forth in this one. Very fun game, but man, Seth Beer with the walk-off shot. He had Dalton Pompey with the clutch walk right there. You gotta love what you saw from both of those two teams there fighting to the very end. All right, guys, let's go to Los Angeles against Colorado. We got Coyotes Park. It's a stadium that's built on rocks. It's built inside the mountains. If you download it, you'll find out. Got a low, a very, very low outfield wall there. So you got to be careful if you're an outfielder trying to run down a fly ball to not fall over it. It's kind of like high school, really. Conforto with a two-run homer. Guys, he's going to lead off the scoring here for L.A. Tim Anderson going to strike out to end the first inning for Colorado. Paxton Burnside, the designated hitter slash first base custom player, going to get on with his first ever GGBL hit. He's a bottom second single. See if they can score him. Jed Jerko, fly ball, left field, in foul territory. What a catch by Ender Inciarte. How in the world did he track that down? Take a look at this. Diving at the very last minute, the very last second, 100% route efficiency right there. It covered 90 feet. He covered basically batter's box to first base right there. Holy cow, really nice play by Ender Inciarte, but guess what? Catcher, Campusano going deep, and Ender Inciarte is not going to catch that one. That's a home run for Luis Campusano. He's going to get a solo shot, going to bring it back to 2-1. to one. Now, Ender Inciarte, is he going to catch this one? No, I thought that was going to get out, but it's going to hit the top of the wall. The, the lowest wall in the entire GGBL and Luis Liberato can't get over top of it. Go figure that, right? So runner on second base here, Tim Anderson, base knock, and whoa! Liberato's gonna challenge here, and he's gonna utilize that speed. He's gonna score all the way from second base on a line drive to shallow right field. That's crazy. So Conforto out there can't get the throw off and make the play, so it is now tied two to two. Will Myers after the mound visit, and Tomo Sagano is gonna strike him out. Now here's Corey Lee, he's gonna go deep. Now guys, keep in mind, this is Colorado, and the altitude does play a factor here in this game, so good job by MLB The Show to make sure that altitude does play a factor. Little foreshadowing, possibly, maybe. We're gonna see a lot of home runs, maybe. But Corey Lee takes the lead again. Three to two, Paxton Burnside, little fly ball, right? Is it fly ball? No, it's gonna keep carrying, and Basabe, is not even going to try for it because it's off the top of the batter's eye. Dead center. Paxton Burnside. Using every bit of muscle that this guy's got, man. This guy's a freaking tank. And, of course, the rookie gets the silent treatment going in for his first ever GGBL home run. You know, Paxton Burnside is going to be fun to watch out here in Colorado for certain. DH, first baseman type. He's young. Got a lot of power, and out here in Colorado, it's going to be fun watching him, especially if he can keep doing that, hitting baseballs right off the top of the batter's eye. That's crazy. But Luis Basabe says, you know what, dude? I saw that home run that you hit over top of me. Anything you can do, I can do a little bit better, or at least the same. Tim Anderson looking around like, man, dude, what is going on here? We got home run derby out, man. What did I sign myself up for? Am I ever going to get a ground ball again? <laughs> End of the day for Joey Lucchese, and we get another home run for Michael Conforto. That's number two for Michael Conforto. So if you're keeping track here, we've got two home runs for Conforto. we got three home runs for Alex Bregman. Those would be your leaders in home runs if the stats, well, the stats are ending here today. But five to four game here after a base knock by Luis Liberato. Now, dude, hey, kid, come on, man. Get a, little, get a little bit more excited. You just cut the lead down to one. You got Tim Anderson coming up here with a 3-0 count. Timmy, no. Is this going to travel out? No, Basabe is going to track it, make the play. Timmy Anderson, man. Ah, 3-0 count. Dude, you can't do that. 
Joe Jimenez comes on, gets a strikeout on Will Myers. It's a nice slider. It's a nasty slider. Now Paxton Burnside is going to get a base hit here to left field. That's Inciarte makes the play. You're kind of hoping for a home run right there. Bottom of the eighth. This is getting into some crunch time now. Jed Jerko coming up. He's got a chance to take the lead here for Colorado. If not, just simply tie it. 0-2 count. Jimenez, slider. And Jerko is going to swing and a miss. And Joe Jimenez is fired up. I would be too if I were him. Lefty on righty. Gap shot. No. Home run. Eight to six. Carter Keyboom lays the boomstick on Luis Avalon. And unfortunately for Colorado, with all the home runs that were hit, they just can't do enough in their home ballpark to take care of Los Angeles. They take care of business here on the road, eight to four. Conforto with two home runs, three for four. Sugano and Lucchese were decent, five innings each, couple strikeouts, but I think the name of the game here was the bullpen for Colorado and the timely hitting for both teams. Colorado didn't have a lot of timely hitting. LA definitely had their timely hitting going for them. So ultimately, I think that's what cost Colorado the game, but I hope you guys liked the action that you saw here for the first ever GGBL episode. Episode two is coming on Friday where we cover all of the rest of the games here that don't have any scores finalized. Therefore, every single team is going to be shown on opening day. On Friday, keep in mind though, on Friday, we're going to show all those games. We're also going to simulate the entire month of April. And how that affects your weekly fantasy challenge is I'm going to total up each and every one of your player selections and tally a point total for the month of simulation. So therefore, you guys will know who won. If you finished in the top five, if you've won a prospect for basically week one of the GGBL, week two will cover May, week three will cover June, week four will cover July, so on and so forth, guys. So really, if we do two episodes of highlights per month, per week, we're going to get into the playoffs by like episode 15. So it's pretty crazy. We're going to move at light speed through this thing. I really want to get a ton of seasons in here. I want to see all your prospects flourish and do well. And I want to watch this league grow and advance into something really, really special. So guys, I will end up seeing you actually tonight. If you're interested, go over to the other platform, the purple platform. We're going to be live streaming over there tonight at 9.30 Eastern for the Richmond Good Boys and Carolina Blue Sox game. And then that game will be ended up cutting up into some highlights and we're going to throw it into the Friday episode. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. I hope you enjoyed the GGBL episode one of highlights. I'll see you later on tonight or on Friday. As always, thank you for watching and peace.